In this video, we will understand about digital public infrastructure category identity, which is mostly built on MoSIP or which is also called modular open source identity platform. It's a well documented system through which multiple countries can build their own identity layer. So identity could be foundational and functional as well, which means that either the identity can become a foundational layer to a country. For example, if it's a digital identity, it could be a foundational. But if it's a functional ID, for example, a health ID, an education ID, a student ID, these are functional ID. But if you're talking about a national identity, then that is a foundational ID. So we have already talked about that foundational ID is the basic ID on the basis of which multiple things can be created. Functional ID is more functional or specific to that function. For example, health ID could be very functional to the health uh, care. However, those identities can link up with individual foundational identity and create a third layer as well, which can solve the second level and third level problem as well. So let us look at which are those com countries which have created a digital identities. This is not an exhaustive list. There are many other countries who are working on it, which are thinking about creating a digital identity because that's the basic problem to solve for any country to start on the digital public infrastructure journey. So these are not exhaustive and these are just representative where you will be able to understand how it works and what are those uh, developments across the world. So number one, let's start with India, which has an Aadhaar ecosystem, uh, which is a digital identity, which helps a person to identify himself or herself, who they are through biometrics, either by face scan, iris scan, or by their uh, finger impression. So we, we will talk about that in detail. And then there is a PAN card, which is like a permanent account number, which is for the taxation purposes. Then there is an Udyam ID, which is for the medium, small, and micro enterprises. So this is an ID which helps a uh, business to identify itself. So similarly, as you have Aadhaar for individuals, Udyam ID is for businesses. Then there are virtual identity numbers as well. So uh, since uh, there are a lot of uh, policy restrictions, there are a lot of pol uh, privacy restrictions. So now virtual IDs have been created on, on top of the basic Aadhaar number so that uh, the actual Aadhaar number can be kind of uh, masked with these virtual IDs. So then there are multiple other such IDs as well. Uh, however, the Aadhaar number is the biggest one. It's like a kind of your national uh, identity number where through which you can identify yourself. And this has helped India to grow multifold to offer banking services, to health services, to education services, to uh, vaccine certificates. So it has become a foundational ID for multiple other, to solve multiple other functional problems as well. Now let's move to Australia. Australia has this system called Australian Government Digital ID System. And this system is uh, helps uh, a government to identify its citizens and offer them services, uh, government services uh, basis their requirement. So it's a system through which uh, citizens can get their services from uh, Australian government. So, and then now moving to France, which has France Connect, uh, which is a portal for all private and government services. So it's a platform on which a different uh, administration of uh, France offer their services, government services, which citizens can go log in and can avail those services. In Japan, it is GBiz ID or business entities uh, ID. So here all the businesses will have uh, the IDs similar to what uh, we talked about in Udyam ID. Here the businesses have their IDs which can be linked to multiple services. Then there is called Mina Portal, then there is My Number ID and these are like individual IDs where the customers or the citizens will have a unique ID through which they can get the services. Oman has a national PKI which is Public Key Infrastructure Based Identity and PKI is considered to be very secured because uh, uh, each participant into the PKI infrastructure has a private and a public key on the basis of which they kind of unlock that who can participate into this transaction and who can get what kind of services. 
So, uh, I am not going in detail about the PKI infrastructure, but most of the secured systems have this PKI infrastructure as the architecture whenever they are designing the identity. Oman is using it extensively and other services even if you look at uh, India on Aadhaar and uh, all other systems like in Australia, France, Japan, I am sure that they are also using the public infrastructure because that is the one of the safest and the secure way of managing such kind of big large interoperable ecosystem. In Brazil, there is called CIN or citizen identification number which is a blockchain based identity system and they also have government.brazilid which has three layers. This is very interesting which is bronze, silver and gold level. So, how this is segregated is that the if you need the basic services like revenue, social security etc. You can use bronze level of services and if you need banking services it is like silver use of that identity and for gold it is for election pur purposes and uses biometric. Now, let us visualize that for example, if you just want to file a tax. So, uh, which means that these layers also define that in order to fulfill these services, what kind of information you can take from citizens, right? For example, gold level, let us let's take the case of gold level. In order to cast your vote into an election, you need to prove your biometrics, right? But in order to file a tax, you do not need a biometric. So, hence, they have decided that what type of entity can take what kind of information and what is minimum required uh, information. So, in, 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 the, in the digital public infrastructure when you are dealing with multiple stakeholder, you have to be minimalist by design to understand that can, why do we need an additional information if the minimum is sufficient. Because these are identities of individuals or businesses and it should not be exposed unnecessarily unless it is required. So, government of Brazil has created this bronze, silver and gold level. Uh, so, de it depends on what kind of services, what kind of department that system uh, is involved in and what kind of services the citizens want. European Union has European Digital Identity Wallet EUIDI which is for person and business. So, if there is an individual into European Union or in business uh, or if there is a business in European Union, they can use this wallet to do multiple kind of services like payments, banking and to take all other government services uh, across the European Union. So, this is a wallet that can be used, it creates an interoperability and uh, it also gives an interoperable identity. So, this is something that we were talking about that even though you are creating a local kind of a system, it has to be interoperable and can be used by multiple parties globally or beyond your own domestic ecosystem as well. So, this European uh, digital identity wallet is one such case where all the countries or most of the countries who accepts this UI, EUIDI wallet can use this system and cross leverage the, uh, the centralized systems to kind of benefit from each other. In Nigeria, there is something called national identification number or NIN. It is it has 11 random digits. It has got the fingerprints, the photos and digital signature uh, similar to Aadhaar as well in Aadhaar. Uh, is also a random digit number which has an algorithm called Verov algorithm. We will talk about that, that what is an architecture of Aadhaar, what does it mean, what is a one to one entry and what is one to n match. So, we will talk about those things in, in, in the next video. But here, uh, so here whenever you are registering for NIN, uh, you have to give your fingerprint, you have to give your photograph and it can be used as a digital signature as well. In Bangladesh, there is something called doctor which is for unified digital ID to government officers. So, a doctor is an identity for the government officials. With that identity, you can identify each government official. It is like a unique employee number, but then this unique employee number is not domestic or it is not proprietary to that particular ecosystem or that ministry, which means that this will be unique across the country and each uh, government official regardless of which ministry or this, which government organization they are part of everyone will have a unique ID identity which will not be duplicated, right. So, and similar they have like DBID which is unique to the uh, business ID which is digital business identification. So, each business will have a unique ID on the basis of which it can take some services, it can take some benefits from government and can also register for some private services. Estonia has EID which can be used for digitally signing the documents, e-voting, healthcare, bank accounts 
and all other services. So it also has a multi-layered kind of approach, something that we saw in Brazil, a bronze, silver and gold kind of system. We'll talk about that in, in the next video. And then it also has a very good system called XROAD, which is a public private data kind of an exchange that how data can be exchanged between different entities. We'll talk about that uh, in the next videos as well. And then Singapore has something called SingPass, which is a personal authentication system to access government services. It's on a mobile phone. You can get that SingPass. You can upload all the documents. And whenever you want to get those any services, you can just share your details uh, through your mobile phone to the other entity. And then your identity gets kind of approved that okay and authenticated and now you can avail those services. So it's a very uh, good system of SingPass. In UAE, they, they call it UAE Pass. It's a national digital identity solution to avail services. You can also do a digital sign. So then these are different countries which are using identity layers uh, for the business, for the individuals as well, which is now helping them to transform the way they offer services. They also kind of cross leverage each other's speciality and each other's kind of a database to create a public good, to create services for their citizens and also run a data based governance. So it is easier for everyone. Citizens have better access to all the services, instant service delivery and everything else. So this is the layer of uh, foundational and functional IDs that these countries have created. Just to reiterate, as we have started by saying that many more countries are working on the DPIs for the IDs. These are just for references and explanation of the architecture and to name some of the IDs that you can refer to if you are planning to study about the identities or if you are planning to kind of uh, go in detail or you are planning to create a digital identity for your ecosystem. These are certain systems that you can read and you can refer to and definitely they are a repository on the GitHub and all other public infrastructure or kind of uh, registries. You can go there, learn about it and create for your own country. So that's all of this video. Thank you and take care.